2017 has been a great year for games, but it's only half over. And while everything else in the world may not be great, we got a lot of good titles coming up. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 25 upcoming games of 2017, the second half. Number 25 is Agents of Mayhem, which is coming to Windows, PC, PS4, and Xbox One on August 15th. Agents of Mayhem kind of takes what we have from Saints Row and makes it into exactly what it sounds like. Like if you can imagine Saints Row, but more focused on bizarre superpowers. It's an open world game played in third person and assumes that Gad Out of Hell ended with the Recreate Earth ending, which ends up resulting in an organization called Mayhem, filled with superheroes having to fight an organization called Legion, filled with supervillains. Their goal is destroying the world's nations. We don't really have a lot of motive as of yet, but it sounds intriguing on account, well, the Saints Row series is very intriguing as is. I expect it to be an interesting take on the open world game filled with superpowers and basically unleashing a lot of what Saints Row is about, just the total absurdity of it. If Agents of Mayhem lives up to its potential, it's probably going to be, well, awesome. Number 24 is Absolver, which is coming to Windows, PS4, and Xbox One on August 22nd. Absolver is a really interesting action RPG that focuses on martial arts. One of their main design principles is that the combat needs to feel like a dance, which from what I've seen of it definitely looks like it may be the case. Everything looks incredibly fluid. The fighting system looks beyond intriguing to me, and on top of that, it's kind of massively multiplayer. It has elements of that, with a lot of the open world quest type stuff, all the way down to player versus player in this very cool 3D fighting system that they've developed. I'm very excited about this, honestly, partly because of all the systems that are on display. They look, frankly, incredibly well polished and good to me, but the look of the game is also this combination of surrealism and hyperrealism that's beyond stylish. I can't wait to play Absolver. Number 23 is Life is Strange Before the Storm, which is coming to Windows, PS4, and Xbox One on August 31st. If you didn't get enough of Life is Strange, and to be clear, I did not, I could definitely play more of that. There's so many interesting game concepts on display, for the course of this series, we get a prequel that tries all of the setup. It's going to focus on Chloe from the first game and have some of the other characters from the first game as well. The game actually doesn't contain time travel, so it's fairly interesting what we're going to be dealing with, being that decisions will probably have more permanent ramifications. This was an interesting world to start with, so delving further into it, I'm excited for and I look forward to it. Number 22 is Knack 2 coming September 5th to the PS4 exclusively. Now now, Knack 1 didn't get the best response ever. It's a really interesting game with a lot of good concepts, but it didn't get the best execution it could have. And you can find some extremely big fans of the game, but most of them even acknowledge there were serious problems with it. It just wasn't a well-developed game. And the thing that sucks is that if you explain it to someone, it sounds pretty good. The first Knack was a platforming beat-em-up game with essentially a morphing protection Antagonist that could take any number of different forms and kind of felt like Katamari Damacy if it was more like Crash Bandicoot, which is a really weird combination, but honestly, if it had been executed better, it probably would have been really good, but it wasn't. The developer in charge of it that works with Sony was very excited to be able to make the second in this series because they thought it was a lot more potential to live up to, and when they admit that they did it wrong the first time, just don't dance around it and said, look, we had a great idea, but it just fell flat. That alone kind of makes me excited just because they don't normally do that in the business. Normally it's everything's great until it sells terribly and then we don't talk about it anymore ever again. So just because it's an industry anomaly, I'm kind of excited about it, but the idea that it could live up to its full potential, I really want to see if it happens, personally. Number 21 is Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which is a, and I can't believe I'm saying this, crossover between these two franchises that actually looks very interesting to me. It's coming exclusively to Switch on August 29th. At first, I was a little bit slow to it, I'm going to admit, but the more footage I see of this game, the more interesting it 
seems to have a sort of cutesy tactical strategy game. I mean, I'm not really 100% sure why the Rabbids have to be involved, but a Mario turn-based strategy could be damn good. Super Mario RPG was a highlight for Mario, if you ask me, and that makes me interested in this kind of experiment. And although the Rabbids are kind of a huge gimmick, it doesn't matter, because the game legitimately looks like an interesting idea, and I'm pretty ready to try it out. Number 20 is Cuphead, coming exclusively for the Xbox One on September 29th, which is a side-scroller shooter with bullet hell elements and perhaps the best art style in all of gaming, something that apes the incredibly old Disney cartoons literally down to the artifacts of the preservation of film. This has easily been one of the projects I've been most interested in over the years, and to know that it's finally coming is something that I am really excited for, because while Cuphead is brilliant, from every indication I've seen, this is going to be one of those games where we're like, wow, this is the perfect example of what this kind of game is. Now, obviously, there's a bit of a span of time before we get the finished product in our hands, so we can't fully judge it before then, but still, this is one of those games that I think is going to be really, really, really good. Like, this is why I game type good. Number 19 is Yakuza Kiwami, which is coming exclusively to PS4 on August 29th. This is a remaster of the original Yakuza which, in my opinion, definitely needed it. Yakuza is a great game, but it is a little bit dated. On top of that, they've added some more content to sort of, you know, tie up some loose ends. And on top of that, are adding a lot more options as far as battle goes. Like Yakuza 0, you'll have the ability to switch between fighting styles, and I like that. Yakuza is one of those series that, over the course of its existence, sort of became a lot better. And to have a more polished version of the original is always a good thing. I just think that is a great move on Sega's part, and would like to thank them for doing this. Number 18 is Project Cars 2, coming to Windows, PS4, and Xbox One on September 22nd. Project Cars was obviously a very successful simulator, and that is something that you really, you know, want to continue. A lot of simulators don't really get off the ground, but Project Cars is, even though not 100% a pure simulation, much heavier on simulation, and still really is enjoyable by a lot of people. They're bringing in a focus on eSports, which, you know, makes perfect sense for a competitive racing game, especially one that has been so highly regarded, and as of 2017, this game is going to contain the largest track roster on a console racing game. Most of those tracks are going to be laser scan circuits, and this is going to be really interesting because they have a physics engine that's brand new, and a lot of new effects involving the weather, and other things that will actually affect how you're driving your vehicle. I'm excited for it. If you like racing simulation, this is going to probably be the game of 2017, so keep an eye out. Number 17 is Forza Motorsport 7, coming to Windows and Xbox One October 3rd, which is not quite the simulator Project Cars 2 is going to be. Obviously, the Forza Motorsport games trend a little bit more towards arcade, even if not the main series as much as Horizon, and frankly, having a refresh on the Forza series is always going to be a good thing. Forza gets it right. It's not a stupid racing game by any means, but for people who aren't really that into the simulator style game, but still want something deep and indulgent, Forza Motorsport 7 looks kind of like that's going to be what it is. There's going to be over 700 cars in this game, so that's ridiculous, as well as some new circuits, and the game is going to run in 4K at 60 frames per second. I'm excited to see what that looks like, because Forza's a gorgeous game. Number 16 is Middle Earth Shadow of War, coming to Windows, PS4, and Xbox One on October 10th. The sequel of Shadow of Mordor, this is a game that got some controversy upon announcement, but honestly I think it's probably going to be something good. They've built upon the Nemesis system to kind of make it in more of an actual worldwide consequence driving system, which I like the sound of, and frankly I liked the first one. It wasn't a perfect game by any means, but for what it was, it was a cool hack and slash, and I liked the sort of detailed effects that could happen. It looks as though they're going further into those systems to try and make a more accurate action RPG type approach than a hack and slash. I hope that a lot of the combat elements are retained, honestly, but that they're, they're just developed. That's kind of what I'm looking for. And my fingers are crossed. They're saying it's like Terminator 2 to their Terminator, which if that's the truth, I'm there. Terminator 2 is way better. Number 15 is Evil Within 2 coming to Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on October 13th. 
Continuing the story of the first one, it's taking place three years after. STEM is still the setting, but it's a return there looking for Lily, Sebastian's daughter, who everybody thinks is dead. Now, remember there was a lot of criticism for Sebastian the first time around as not being an incredibly interesting protagonist, but it seems like they're somewhat aware of that and have tried to more deliver on the promise of the game itself. Obviously, the original is kind of built on visual experimentation and all of the promotional material for this one looks to be continuing that tradition. I feel like the bar is decent for it to be better than the first one, but it does look from the presentation we've seen thus far to be a much more exciting game. And well, that's what I wanted. Number 14, Need for Speed Payback, which will be out on Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on November 7th. This looks interesting because obviously it's Need for Speed, but there's three different characters and they'll have to work together to pull off action movie style sequences a la GTA 5, except for specifically about driving and driving like a badass. What makes me particularly happy, I have to say though, this new Need for Speed has offline single player. I'm guessing everybody understood that that was kind of a bad thing to leave out of a Need for Speed reboot. Always on games, we just don't really want them. We want campaigns too. And it looks to me from everything I've seen that Need for Speed Payback is going to deliver on that. So kudos to EA and Ghost Games. You listened and it seems like you're doing what we want you to do. Number 13 is South Park the Fractured But Whole. Yes, I'm going to say it like that because I don't want to say it the other way. Coming to Windows, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on October 17th. If you played the previous South Park game, you would know that this was a really damn good, basically JRPG. And they've built upon that with more movement systems incorporated in. It's not necessarily XCOM, but it seems to favor some of those ideas, but seems to retain all the best parts of the previous game. I'm excited because the other game, while not necessarily entirely original, a lot of it was about the history of South Park was really well executed and what makes me excited about this is they can't really repeat that. They've been through the history of South Park and now it's all about, you know, continuing the story. Number 12 is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, which is coming to Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on September 19th. This is basically Marvel vs. Capcom scaled down to a 2 vs. 2 match, which is, in my opinion, not necessarily a bad thing. It kind of simplifies it, makes it easier to get into, to sort of understand what's going on, but on top of that introduces the concept of Infinity Star because obviously the word infinite is in it. The Infinity War is on its way as far as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and they're intended to give more of a customization element to the game, which I think is interesting. Now, remember when I criticized Street Fighter V when it was released? I said it was a great playing game, but there were a number of issues with it, including a lack of content and the fact that their servers weren't that great. Well, those are the things that they took to heart for this game because they're going to be introducing it with a much larger array of single player content coming up and then on top of that are going to be using dedicated servers from Sony and Microsoft to avoid that kind of a fiasco again because yeah also no more currency systems because you know F that. Number 11 is Divinity Original Sin 2 coming to Windows September 14th a sequel taking place centuries after the first game. It looks to be introducing a number of new systems including the love and hate system. We've talked about it before in previous coverage. It's basically friendship, romantic relationships, or even hatred that you share between other characters in the game, as well as a competitive multiplayer mode, which gives you arena-style play with the, frankly, phenomenal Divinity Original Sin battle system, which I enjoy the hell out of. It's really just the sequel to one of the best classic-style RPGs that's out there, period. That's all. Number 10 is XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, coming to Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on August 29th. War of the Chosen is an expansion, but keeping in mind how much content it's probably going to have, it's probably going to be more than worthwhile. One of the bigger promises they have is greater customization, giving you more advanced fine-tuning options as far as not just what's going on with the visual style of your characters, but also even fine adjustments on game length and difficulty. 
On top of that, replayability, while it's supposedly going to be a lot better because they're adding modifiers to the tactical layer, and that is a direct quote, so we need to hold them to that, that ensure that every mission is going to provide a unique challenge. I'm quite interested in it, obviously XCOM is basically the premier turn-based strategy out there, and really, how could we not want more of it? Number 9 is Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon coming to 3DS on November 17th. This is basically the alternate story that game Game Freak likes to provide a little on down the road that uses a lot of the same material, however, arranges it in a way that is novel and interesting. And if you've ever been privy to this style of Pokemon game, they have obviously been done prior to this. It's not a new experience per se, but it's a different experience and one that is always worth it because Pokemon is an ever-expanding universe that you basically always want to be a part of. I can't imagine this will somehow break that tradition and suck all of a sudden. Really, who can get enough of Pokemon? I don't think anyone at this point in time. So, yeah, give me more. I'll take more. Thanks. Number 8 is Star Wars Battlefront 2 coming to Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on November 17th. If you liked Battlefront 1 but had, you know, the same range of complaints that I did, actually pretty similar to the complaints I had for Street Fighter V, frankly, all of that seems to be remedied. Like, everything I've seen of this Battlefront makes it seem like the battlefront I've wanted for a long time. It has a campaign, an actually good-looking single-player campaign that seems as though they put a large amount of effort into, which is uncharacteristic of a game that is a sequel to a game that had no campaign. But it is Star Wars, and obviously the game kind of functions as marketing for the movie that happens later in the year, so they kind of have to realize that doing it the way they did it the last time maybe wasn't the right way to go. The more excited about Star Wars people are, the more they'll want to see the movie in December, you know. But the game itself looks very much like exactly what I wanted, Star Wars Battlefront, but not stupid, meaning having an abundance of content, which by the way, all updates coming after the game will be free, although there will be microtransactions, I don't care. Supposedly the matchmaking is going to be a lot better and more balanced, so if you ask me, that's not a bad trade-off. There's also some of the elements of the recent hero-based shooters that have been incorporated, however, those are elements that were also present in the very old old school Star Wars Battlefront series, so it's probably just going to be awesome. That's basically all I have to say about that. Number 7 is Call of Duty World War II coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on November 3rd. After the technological warfare trilogy that kinda wasn't asked for, people were really craving World War II style gameplay set in a obviously more grounded world and we've got it. Now there's a lot of interesting things taking place in this game. I'm not so sure the gameplay itself is among that it may be fairly standard Call of Duty gameplay, it may be more detailed, but they're talking about actually depicting the horrors of the Holocaust, which is, you know, kind of the main thing we remember World War II for. It's interesting that World War II games tend to not really talk about that aspect of it, and this should actually be fairly interesting. I don't know, I'm very intrigued by this game, and though I liked Black Ops 3, I wasn't intrigued by Black Ops 3. It was just a really, really competent game that had a lot of interesting arcade-oriented stuff integrated into a shooter, and I enjoyed it, but I'm intrigued by this, so hopefully that pans out. Number six is Assassin's Creed Origins, which takes place in ancient Egypt and appears to be much more absolutely massive than any other Assassin's Creed game, and in that, it appears to actually have a more faithful architecture style, not having as many tall structures, as well as having a much more, well, let's just go ahead and say tight looking combat system that isn't just reaction. Honestly, Assassin's Creed desperately needed a break. They spent longer developing this one and I think that it's going to result in a much better game. Number five is Uncharted The Lost Legacy coming exclusively to PlayStation 4 on August 22nd. This game started as an add-on for the Uncharted 4 main game, but it grew into a much larger project because they got attached to it, they were enjoying the hell out of it, and when I hear stuff like that, it makes me very interested in it. It features Chloe, Frasier, which is the love interest from Uncharted 2, who also appeared in Uncharted 4, as well as Nadine Ross from the private military company, who served as an antagonist in Uncharted 4. Instead of the focus being on specific explorers, it's on the region, which in this game is India, and frankly, this could very well be a damn 
killer game. Uncharted 4 was fantastic, and apparently they've done a much better job at implementing large open world areas, and because they did a pretty good job of that in Uncharted 4, I'm pretty damn excited. Number 4 is Crackdown 3 coming to Windows and Xbox One on November 7th. Come on, you can't not know why I want this game at this point. We've talked about this more than a few times now. I love Destructible Environments, and Crackdown 3 looks to be the granddaddy of all games featuring destructive environments. You like Red Faction Guerrilla? Cool, this is way more. I mean, you have the sandbox elements from the previous games retained, except for you can bring down basically any building and it's going to be completely insane. Thank you, cloud computing. You have enabled the thing that I've wanted in a shooting game forever. And although it's a bit of a letdown, it was revealed that destruction really only happens in multiplayer, at least on the level that looks fun, it's still gonna happen, and multiplayer looks pretty fun, so I'm hoping that it's, you know, worth it. Frankly, this game could be a disappointment as far as the narrative goes, which it stars Terry Crews, so it can't be that bad. And as long as the gameplay works out how it looks to work out, I'm probably there. Number three is Destiny 2 coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One on September 5th, PC on October 24th, and in every way, Destiny 2 kinda seems like what Destiny 1 should have been, and although that isn't like the most intense praise, it's also basically what everybody wanted. Destiny 2 looks like it has taken all the lessons that Bungie has learned about Destiny through the course of Destiny and made a new game with them. And that's what I want out of Destiny 2. In fact, that's kind of what Destiny 1 had to become in order for it not to be considered a huge disaster. It was not that great upon original release, but over time became something quite enjoyable and obviously that's why we're at least interested in destiny 2 i think it's probably going to be from start obviously at the bar we want it to be at and we'll just continue to improve from there and in my opinion that's a valiant effort on bungie's part number two is wolfenstein 2 the new colossus coming to windows xbox one and playstation 4 on october 27th wolfenstein 2 looks to be exactly what anybody would want out of it the nazis win the second world war and this is set setting up a second American revolution to take down the Nazis, and frankly, any excuse to take down the Nazis is exactly what it should be. The New Order and the Old Blood are both phenomenal, and really, what could you possibly want other than just more of that? They did it right, and if they add anything to it, it's really, I would say, just more levels that I want. I want more of this incarnation of Wolfenstein. It just, in my opinion, nails it. Basically, New Order and Old Blood were just extremely well-designed shooters that nailed pretty much every aspect, and that's what I want more of. And finally, number one is Super Mario Odyssey coming to the Nintendo Switch on October 26th. 7th. This is a game that to me just seems very interesting. Obviously, it's a new Mario game, so I'm there. I always want to try out a new Mario game. But they've made some controversial design choices that I don't honestly think are going to have that big of an impact on the game itself. It's another Mario game with another set of powers for Mario to use and explore, and it seems like he has one of the most wide arrays of different stages that he is going to be transversing. And this is the first new Mario exactly like this the full 3D Mario 64 Descendant Mario style in quite a while, and I am ready for it. I have a taste for it. I am there. I'm like a shark circling the wounded swimmer on this. It better be good because I am going to spend money on it. But Nintendo seems to be doing correct thing after correct thing with the Switch, so I'm not really that worried. A couple of bonus games for you, including FIFA 18, the latest incarnation of the soccer slash football franchise coming for Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 on September 29th. Madden 18, the NFL equivalent of FIFA 18, coming to PS4 and Xbox One on August 25th, Pocket Tournament. DX, coming to Switch on September 22nd. I'm excited for the ability to battle more Pokemon in that way. Frankly, the Switch is exactly where I want to do that. And finally, Dishonored Death of the Outsider, coming to PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on September 15th, in which you will hunt the Outsider. I love Dishonored and there's no way I won't play this. What game are you looking forward to most in the second half of 2017? Leave a comment, let us know why, and if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now would be a good time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.